As the senior wing leader, Naira is responsible for seeing the first years off down the training field for presentation after the section leaders give them their instructions, so I don't need to be there and decide to head back and read the letter from Brennan that's waiting for me in my room. The idea sounded more pleasant than the alternative of staying to see, and smell, the least worthy first years being picked off by the dragons. Though, if Mason was right about Brennan's attitude regarding the message, I might end up having to reassess that. I open my door and find the letter waiting for me on my desk. Pulling a dagger from a sheath at my hip, I sit at the chair, slice through the seal, and unfold the parchment. The entire message consists of a four-word question, but I know exactly what he's really telling me. Why have you been avoiding me? I think back to a conversation that was about eight months ago now. I haven't been avoiding you, I say, immediately realizing that my tone is way too defensive. We're standing in the five-story tall entryway just inside the massive double doors of Ryerson House. Uh-huh, Brennan raises a skeptical brow at me. So you were planning to potentially lose a finger to frostbite rather than come see me just for fun? I sigh. Crod accidentally stepped on my shit back at the drop location for the weapon smuggling, and his claw took a finger off one of my riding gloves. I explain. And yet you still offered to be the one to make the run to Erasia afterward, despite the fact that you almost always make one of the others do it even when you have two intact gloves? Brennan pushes, taking my injured hand in both of his own. Coming here to get a new pair is a slightly shorter flight. I improvise as warmth and an easing of the pain begins flowing through my finger. If I'd headed straight back to Basgaeth, I really might have lost the finger. Hey, that actually made sense, I think to myself. Congratulations. I can practically feel Sagale rolling her eyes through our bond. Why are you really here, Zayden? Brennan's tone makes it obvious that he's just as impressed with my excuse as Sagale. I... need someone's advice, I admit. And that someone isn't me? Brennan asks, seeming genuinely surprised and maybe even a little hurt. He releases my hand and I alternately clench my fist and splay my fingers. It feels as good as new. It's just... I don't know what to say. Ah, I think I see. It's about a matter concerning me, Brennan says simply. Or at least it arguably could. Well, yeah, exactly. I wait for the other shoe to drop. Okay, no worries. He shrugs, then starts turning to leave. Wait, you're not pissed that I didn't come tell you? And you're not going to make me tell you now? I ask, baffled. Of course not, he frowns, looking slightly puzzled. Hang on, how are we both confused here? I say, trying to get my bearings. It's like you don't mind if I keep something from you, which is a whole thing on its own, but surely you can at least see how I'd find that super fucking weird. Are you like... a human? Damn. Emotional trauma really does fuck a kid up, doesn't it? Brennan sighs. Alright, look at me, Zayden. It seems like this one might throw you for a loop. I trust you. He puts his hands up as if indicating that's all there is to it. Okay? I say, not following. For Amari's sake, Zayden, is it something you think I'd be better off not knowing? Brennan demands. I'm not sure. That's what I need advice about. I stammer. Then I can't be the one to give you that advice, Brennan says simply. Go talk to Trissa. She's patient enough to talk it out with you and help you decide. And if you two determine that it's something I shouldn't know, then I'm fine with that. Because I trust you. Wow, it's like you really aren't human, I say with admiration. I absolutely have to know about anything and everything that might concern me or my friends or the revolution or... God's Ryerson, Brennan interrupts, chuckling and shaking his head. You're lucky you didn't turn out to be an intrinsic. I don't think I could move a muscle if I tried. You know, sometimes you kind of remind me of my youngest sister, Violet, Brennan muses. She's not always the best at navigating interpersonal shit either, and she's obsessed with wanting to know everything too. She used to devour hundreds of books a year. I'm sure she still must. Dad's perfect little scribe. Gods, I miss her. Hey, if you're ever in the archives next year, keep an eye out for a tiny little first-year scribe cadet with hair that's silver at the ends. Maybe we could... Uh, no, she'd be terrified of you. What's she really like, though? Overall, I mean. Do you still think she's a good person, even with those flaws? I ask, needing to know who this person I'd just vowed to protect is. Satan! 
Brennan laughs. Those are more like personality traits than flaws. And even with the legitimate flaws that we all have, they don't make us bad people. We don't have much control over what we think or how we feel about things. And it doesn't matter because that stuff stays inside our heads and doesn't affect anything until we take action on it. It's our actions that make us good or bad. Just because someone is obsessed with needing to know everything. Oh gods, he must think I was fishing for affirmation about whether he thinks I'm a good person. How are you so bad at personal shit? Sigil laughs. And terrible at dealing with emotions, as long as they always do what they believe is the right thing, that's all you could ask for. Brennan continues, looking at me with such sincerity that it makes me squirm. I honestly think Violet is the best person I've ever met. There's almost nothing I'd rather do than run away from all this sentimentality. But, as long as I'm already wading through the ick, there is one other thing I could really use advice about. Do you think it's even okay to do that? To keep things from someone that's... special? Like family or your partner? I'm thinking of Catriona, who I've been formally betrothed to for a little over half a year now, and her failure to admit that rather than the strategic benefits of the Alliance, what she really cares about is the power she'd gain through our marriage. Well, I guess I could see how it could get a little stickier in a situation like that, so maybe it would depend a little more on the context and the specifics? Brennan says, cocking his head and gazing at the windows above as he considers the question. But generally, yes, I still think it's okay. As long as you're keeping it from them because you truly believe that's what's best for them. I'd be the world's biggest hypocrite if I didn't believe that. I'm keeping the very fact that I'm alive from my sisters. But I have to for their own good, and for the good of the revolution. Some things are more important than full disclosure, and with a partner it shouldn't matter anyway. What? How so? I say, not following again. Well, the only thing that really matters between partners is love. Anyone's bound to fuck up a bunch of times throughout the relationship. Gods know I did, Brennan says, sadness filling his face suddenly. But, in the end, their actions will prove that they love you anyway. Brennan, I... I pause, finding that I can't meet his eyes, so I lower my gaze to the floor. I'm really sorry about Nail and... He puts a hand on my shoulder as if inviting me to look up again. I do, and find that there's a sad smile on his face now. Thanks, Zayden. Okay, well, I'd really like to tell you as long as Trissa thinks it's the right thing to do, so do you know where she is? I ask, desperate to extricate myself from this conversation. Yeah, she's in the assembly chambers. Good luck. Brennan smacks me on the shoulder and smiles at my obvious discomfort, then turns, walking off in the other direction. I find Trissa standing in front of the giant war map depicting Venon movements, weaving what must be an extremely complicated rune based on the motion of her arms. Hey, I need to talk to you. I tell her, do you have a minute? Or an hour? Yeah, because I'm clearly not in the middle of anything important. She spares a moment to glance over at me and pauses when she sees my expression. She sighs and drops her arms to her sides. I can weave it again later. I doubt doing it that way would have worked in any case. She sits down in a chair at the end of the table and pulls out the adjacent one, too, motioning for me to join her. I tell her everything about General Sorengale's favor and the conversation I'd just had with Brennan. Well, everything but the irrelevant awkward parts. So do I tell him that his sister's being forced into the Rider's Quadrant and that I'm being forced to act as her protector? I ask. Absolutely not, Trissa says with complete certainty. Really? It's that simple? Of course. She replies, As his reaction clearly demonstrates, Brennan is a gifted strategist that's incredibly intelligent, both cognitively and emotionally, until an emotion powerful enough to override that rationality clouds his judgment. If he finds out what his mother is doing to Violet, I'm not sure there will be any stopping him from mounting Marb and flying straight to Bazgayeth to rescue her from their mother, which would jeopardize the entire revolution, not to mention that in all likelihood he'd get himself and Violet killed in the process. So I just don't tell him? You don't think he'll find out? I challenge. You don't tell anyone, Trissa stresses. I hate to say it, but frankly the best case scenario I can imagine is that she dies early on in some way that General Sorengale can't possibly blame you for, like falling off the parapet or being killed by a dragon or in a challenge. 
Then it could be years before Brennan finds out. If both of you are still alive at that point, just act as if you didn't know she'd be there until she'd already crossed the parapet, at which point there was nothing anyone could do, so you kept it from him to prevent him from worrying or doing something stupid. And then it's just you and I that have to take the truth to our graves. I conclude. But what if she does survive? Trissa sighs. Then, who knows what will happen. We'll just have to cross that bridge if we come to it. I swim up out of my reverie back to the present moment and glance down at the message again. Ryerson. What. The. Fuck. Hey, I hope you're liking my fanfiction. If you want to be notified when the next chapter gets posted, make sure to subscribe and click the bell. And if you want to read along or would just prefer a text version, you can find it online at Archive of Our Own. There's a link to it in the video description. Feel free to let me know what you think or provide constructive feedback in the comments. I always try to reply to any that allow me to share explanations of how I was thinking about specific parts of the narrative. And then I just wanted to make clear that all rights belong to Rebecca Yaros and thank her for creating this incredible world. Thanks for listening.